Hi all, welcome to Raw Online. Today we are going to deal with one important topic which might test the anesthesiologist's knowledge as a perioperative physician. That is nothing but perioperative myocardial infarction. Why you are worried about perioperative myocardial infarction? It is the one of the most important predictor of morbidity and mortality, not only in the short term but also in the long term. So, for an improved outcome, prevention of perioperative myocardial infarction, not the treatment, it is a prevention which is very, very important. Almost 30% of the patient who come for non-cardiac surgery have some form of illness which is associated with cardiovascular system. That is like tip of the iceberg. What is submerged is very important. It increases the mortality by around ninefold morbidity around 32 fold, the cardiac outcome is poorer by almost 40 percent, there is poor long term prognosis and what is more important is the cost escalates by almost double that is by 50 percent. Coming to the definition, the classical definition like chest pain radiating to the left arm, ST changes and serial elevation of cardiac enzyme does not apply to perioperative MI because mostly it is silent, atypical and difficult to diagnose because the patient is anesthetized and he may not be in a position to say he is having in a chest pain. It usually occurs in the hospitalized patient mostly in the post-operative period, not in the intraoperative period. But in non-surgical MI, the patient has typical presentation, he will say he is having chest pain. So, early diagnosis is possible, although the diagnosis is outside the hospital. And here in perioperative MI, you have ST segment depression and non Q wave MI. But in standard non surgical myocardial infarction, there is going to be ST segment elevation and Q wave MI. But the most important difference between perioperative MI and the non-surgical MI lie in the etiology. Here, there is a mismatch between the oxygen supply and demand. But in non-surgical MI, it is a plaque rupture of an atherosclerotic thrombus which is already obstructing the coronary artery. Coming to the types of perioperative MI, they are six types of perioperative MI. In type 1, it is usually associated with plaque erosion of the atherosclerotic plaque which is inside the coronary artery. Type 2, it is a simple mismatch between the oxygen demand and supply. Type 3 is very dangerous. It is an unexpected cardiac death associated with myocardial ischemia. In type 4, here the perioperative MI is associated with some type of percutaneous intervention like the angioplasty. Type 5 is the myocardial infarction associated with cardiac surgery and type 6 is myocardial injury. Of this, most of the time, almost 90 percent of the cases, it is the myocardial infarction associated with misbalance between oxygen demand and the supply. So, what is your goal? First, you should understand how to estimate the perioperative risk if a patient with IHD coming for surgery and other important thing is you should know how to utilize your preoperative test into the intraoperative period. For example, if you do an echo, how does that echo apply in the intraoperative period? And the second most important goal is to reduce the risk in perioperative period, particularly in patient who are at higher risk. These two are the goals in patient with perioperative myocardial infarction. Coming to the preoperative test, here you have a battery of test. They might have good sensitivity, good specificity and good negative predictive value. But look at the positive predictive value. None of the positive predictive value almost cost 20 percent except Goldman class 4. This is because all your preoperative testing will detect that patient has coronary artery disease, but they cannot predict 
how the patient will behave intraoperative period. This is because they assess the presence of obstructive disease but not the plaque vulnerability. You have to understand that. So, this preoperative testing can predict that patient has coronary artery disease but definitely not how they are going to behave in the intraoperative period. That is where challenge as a ideal perioperative fission comes into picture. The first and foremost preoperative testing which is very important in patient with IHD is echocardiogram. All we do is whenever patient comes with the echocardiogram, you look at the systolic function or the diastolic function. It is like a danger waiting to happen. You are focusing on one point without realizing the danger. Here when you look at the echo report, when ejection fraction is more than 50 percent, you are happy. But we do not look at the regional wall motion. As we move from apex to base, we have about 70 segment. As a non-cardiac anesthesiologist, you need not know about all the 17 segment, but certain transthoracic echocardiogram view you should be really aware of. This parasternal long axis and the apical short axis will give a fair view of overall function of the heart. This is the parasternal long axis view. This is the right ventricle, this is the septum, this is the left ventricle and here you have the iota with the aortic valve and here you have the mitral valve and this is the left atrium and left ventricle. You can measure the left atrium aortic ratio and you can look at the left ventricle, right ventricle and almost all the septum everything. So, this is one view which gives a fair function of all the chambers of the heart and this is the short axis view, this is the lateral wall and this is the infralateral wall and this is the septal wall and this is the anterior wall. Here you can see the four major walls and both all the four walls exhibiting different motion. One is hypokinetic, one is akinetic, another one is normally moving. So, at least all non-cardiac anesthesiologists should be aware of this two view.